Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week we take a look at some upcoming races in Hong Kong and try to isolate an element of the race that we might look back on later as having been a path to finding the winner. Well, Sunday racing at Sha Tin, some interesting races. And the first one we're going to look at is race nine. And here the winning factor, the year change. And I think there'll be uh, chances given to a few horses here. Kairos Unicorn, who should have uh, finished closer when second last start. Casemiro uh, coming off some good class four form and taking the rise into class three. But mostly I think the market is going to come back to that uh, regular head-to-head -head duo. Joe Moreira on Chevalier Prince and Zach Purton on Super Football. And that's uh, where I'm going to focus my attention to. And first, we're going to take a look at the latest run by Super Football. Now, this is race 263. And he's here in the black, green and white colours in about midfield. Following the winner, Lucky Patch. Uh, we'll talk more about him a little bit later. And Super Football has a nice run in the race. The pace was good early, slowed up on the circle and then quickened again in the straight. But he couldn't quite match the winner's acceleration there and uh, kept on well, kept finding the line and he gets another 200 metres to run over here. So that was a nice effort, a horse with only two runs in Hong Kong. That was on International Day and also on International Day we saw the latest effort of Chevalier Prince and uh, Chevalier Prince, in my view, the horse to beat. So we're going to take a look at that race, uh, over 1800 metres, and uh, in a strangely run race with an exceptionally slow early speed, uh, he's in the red colours with the white cheek pieces, and gets a nice spot early with the, no pace on. And you see on the heat map, after that very slow early pace, the leaders uh, picked it up from the 1200 to the top of the straight, and Chevalier Prince, well, he had to go with them to keep that position. And uh, you'll also see here, Kairos Unicorn, the grey and the blue and red colours, doesn't have much luck in the last 300 metres. But we're focusing on Chevalier Prince, and in the straight, he hits the front. He looks to float a little bit once he finds the front, and then gets overhauled by the horses running on from behind him. Now, uh, that defeat could have been down to him being uh, tested for stamina at his first attempt at 1800 metres. It could also have been uh, the energy that he spent from the 1200 metres to the 400 metres, keeping up with those leaders when they did pick up the pace, and that left him vulnerable late. But either way, uh, a decent sort of effort. But let's take a look back at his previous run at 1600 metres, where he runs on uh, Sunday. And this is uh, the first time that he wore cheek pieces. And once again, uh, we'll see him here in those uh, red colours. And the speed in this race, uh, much better early. He gets back into midfield. Um, Marrera gets a run through on the inside in the straight. And with the leaders weakening, as you see on the heat map, he gets by them, goes on to win by a neck. But once again, I want to highlight that he looks just to be a little unsure of his job in the last 200 metres and doesn't really put the opposition away. Which brings us to gear changes. Now, that, as I said, that was his first attempt in cheek pieces as his trainer Frankie Law attempted to uh, tweak uh, the horse's gear and uh, get something more from him. And don't really think it quite did the job uh, that he wanted. Now, gear changes in general are often a topic of uh, conversation for horse players and many think they're very important. I took a look last season at uh, specifically blinkers and found a strike rate of about one in 16 winners. So uh, I'm not giving them that much credibility, but I thought we'd take another look at gear changes in general. And perhaps it's just the matter of changing some gear on a horse that can bring about uh, some improvement. So uh, on this table that you see here over the last five years or since uh, the beginning of the 2015-16 season, uh, here's a list of the leading strike rate trainers with their gear changes. And there's Frankie Law right up the top. And once again, uh, I'd say an average uh, rate of winners from this is about maybe one in 14 or 15. Uh, so again, not great. But when we look at Frankie's strike rate, He's right up the top, he stands out, and in the wins versus expected wins column, he's also showing a big lead on the market. So 
Certainly a trainer worth following with his gear changes and uh, good mentions there too for Ricky Yu and Peter Ho. So let's take a look at the map for Sunday's race. And on the map, well, we really only have two leaders here, Smoothies and Beauty Day. But they are quite committed leaders. They're both uh, quite purposeful uh, getting to the front and holding the front. And I think that they might run each other along a little bit here. And uh, I'm thinking that the pace might get up to average. With the blinkers on, uh, Chevalier Prince uh, might be a little bit sharper here and uh, sharp enough to sit in the first half of the field from the good draw and get the ideal run, uh, quite likely in front of uh, what we've identified as his main rival, Super Football. So the tip in race nine, Chevalier Prince, his winning factor, the gear change. Now he has the blinkers going on for the first time. He has looked a horse who might benefit uh, from such a gear change as blinkers. And uh, we've seen on the statistics that Frankie Law has a great and profitable record uh, when it comes to gear changes for his runners. The other race uh, that I want to look at is the final race, race 10, and our winning factor here, race fitness. Now this is a class two uh, that's going to have some relevance for a uh, premier kind of race like the Classic Mile at the end of this month, the first of the four-year-old classics. As we see the return of excellent proposal for John Size, Enriched Delight, who was a good winner at his Hong Kong debut, and Lucky Patch, a winner of two of three starts in Hong Kong. And now he takes the class rise from class three into class two. And there are a couple of other fringe chances, but uh, these are the horses that I want to concentrate on. And we've already seen earlier uh, on the show uh, Lucky Patch's latest win on International Day, and uh, he's a horse who's flying under the radar a little bit uh, for these uh, four-year-old races. He won two out of two in Australia, he's won two out of three in Hong Kong, and was unlucky the day he was beaten. So he's certainly uh, a horse who might be underrated going forward. I don't think he'll be un underrated in this race, but uh, let's have a look at his opposition and what we might expect from them. And first of all, uh, we're going to go back all the way to the opening day. And this is excellent proposal on uh, the opening day of the season, 1400 metres and race nine. And uh, as you see here, good pressure mid-race to help the horses running on. And in the mainly purple colours in midfield, excellent proposal. Uh, had a bit of a wow factor him, here to him after being held up for running at the top of the straight. He launches late and arrives right on the line to win narrowly. And this was his most recent effort at 1,400 metres. He subsequently won again at 1,600 metres and 1,800 metres before John Size uh, elected to put him aside, give him a little bit of a break before bringing him back for the four-year-old classic races heading towards the Derby. Now also heading for those races, is Enriched Delight. So let's have a look at his Hong Kong debut. And this is race 230. Uh, he was one of a number of uh, well-regarded new horses uh, in this race on November 29. He's in the yellow and red colors at the rear. And once again, good speed on. And I've highlighted in a previous show that this race was really set up for the horses out the back to run on. And he certainly did that. He shows a good uh, change of gears. And Enriched Delight finishes best all over the top of the other runners and wins well uh, by about a length. Now, while excellent proposals break uh, since early season was intended, uh, since that win, Enrich Delight had a leg problem. He was uh, scratched from a race on International Day as a result. And so he has missed a run before coming back for this event here. Now, when we go to the map, uh, once again, uh, Lucky Patch ticks all the boxes. He's got an inside draw. He looks to get a, a good run somewhere forward in a race without a lot of speed. While uh, we might see uh, that lack of speed and uh, the distance, a little bit of a concern for both the Enriched Delight and Excellent Proposal, who are likely going to get back in the field. And uh, they would certainly prefer more pace on, I think. So the tip in race 10, Lucky Patch, his winning factor, race fitness. He might not turn out to be the best horse in this race, Lucky Patch, but he's pretty good. And he has uh, race fitness on his side against a couple of uh, strong opposition runners who haven't run for a while. And he also has the map 
and a light weight in his favour. Well, that's it from the winning factor for this week. Enjoy the racing on Sunday. We'll see you next time.